ITP recently, the ITP uh, interventions testing program recently tried but butanodiol um, as a as, as one of their interventions. Uh, have you tried butanodiol, and, and what what have you seen with kind of giving mice butanodiol? Well, what is butane dial? So butane, butane dial is is a precursor uh, to beta hydroxybutyrate. It's a molecule. It's an alcohol. It's, it's not ethanol, but it's an alcohol that your liver will turn into beta hydroxybutyrate. So it's it's another way of um, it's another trick kind of uh, to get your body to make ketone bodies, regardless of what else you're eating. So butane diol is a common ingredient in exogenous ketones. It's um, it's sometimes used by itself. Uh, it's also often used as one of the building blocks in ketone esters. Um, oh, a number of years ago, uh, Eric Verdon and I, when I was in Eric's lab doing these lifespan studies of ketogenic diet, um, we uh, we suggested to the the, the uh, National Institute on Aging's Intervention Testing Program, um, well, why don't you try butane diol? Um, what is the what is the intervention testing program? This is one of the flagship programs of the National Institutes of Aging's uh, Division of Aging Biology here in the U.S. It's essentially a, a large multi-center clinical trial network for mice. Uh, to test to test drugs that target aging, um, it's been it, it's based at three centers around the country. They do very large mouse experiments. Um, it's the gold standard for doing mouse lifespan studies, um, and they've been at it for oh over ten years now, almost fifteen, I think, uh, maybe more. The first drug they identified, the first hit, was rapamycin, and they've they've generated just a ton of data about rapamycin since then. And there have been about half a dozen other hits. Um, so uh, as we were thinking about ketogenic diets and lifespan, we suggested to them trying butane diol to try to answer this question of just ketone bodies, just ketone bodies without extended lifespan. Um, well, the, the results of that were just released a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, it, and it turns out that butane diol fed into the diet doesn't seem to have much of an effect on lifespan. Uh, in these mice. Um, now there might be a couple of reasons for that. Well, on the one hand, it didn't it didn't hurt them either. It just didn't have much of an effect. Okay. Um, not everything uh, that seems to that might be helpful in humans has worked well in the ITP. Metformin, most famously, uh, metformin um, didn't work all that great in the ITP. But there's a ton of interest from human clinical data uh, in using metformin to target aging. But also it might just suggest that ketone bodies are complicated. And we know that. Um, butane dial uh, at the time, and I think still now, was the only practical way to, to test a, a drug on this scale, a, 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 an exogenous ketone on this scale. Um, it's pretty cheap to manufacture and buy. Ketone esters are much more expensive. Um, but, uh, but one of the reasons it's cheap, I'm gonna, we're gonna dive into chemistry. This is gonna be so great. Uh, enantiomers. And chirality, so uh, so ketone bodies, beta hydroxybutyrate, the major ketone body in, in humans, the one that your body makes a ton of when you start to fast. It's a chiral molecule. It has a handedness to it. There's a left-handed version and there's a, a right-handed version. Our bodies only make one version of it, the right-handed version. Um, we really don't make the left-handed version at all. All the enzymes in our bodies uh, that, that manipulate beta-hydroxybutyrate, they only work on the right-handed version. Um, now the left-handed version might actually be interesting too, even though it's not really present too much in our bodies. Um, our bodies can't really use it for energy, but all those drug-like signaling activities I mentioned, uh, they seem to, most of them work with both the left and right-handed versions. So I'm actually kind of interested in, in you know, how the, the left-handed version might be useful therapeutically, uh, but that's very kind of early stuff. Anyway, so butane dial is both. I mean, you can get one or the other, but that's, you know, 
much more expensive. So the, the version that the ITP tested very reasonably was the mixture of both. Um, this was the first time ever that there's been a long-term mouse study of having lots of the left-handed version of beta-hydroxybutyrate floating around. So, you know, we were, we were really wanted to test the right-handed version, but we had to test both. Um, and you might I mean, I hypothesize why that would be good or bad, or we don't know. Um, but that's one thing to keep in mind uh, as we as we think about, you know, the result of the ITP not seeing uh, an extension of lifespan with butane diol is that there were, it was both forms of ketone bodies. And we don't really know, especially with the left-handed one, what that means for long-term health. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe it didn't. Um, I've seen this in my own data too. Uh, you know, ketone bodies are complicated. One thing that my lab studies is how ketone bodies work in Alzheimer's disease. And in particular, we just uh, released a, a new preprint uh, about the mechanisms of ketone bodies in suppressing epilepsy-like activity in the brains of, of an Alzheimer's mouse model. Um, this is a really, really interesting kind of new area in Alzheimer's disease pathophysiology um, that when certain cells in the brain die from Alzheimer's disease, their, their job was supposed to be to prevent other cells from firing out of control and generating these epilepsy-like spikes on EEGs. Um, it turns out that a ketogenic diet can keep a lid on that, can help suppress the epilepsy-like activity in their brains. Um, and so we tested exogenous ketones, tested butane diol, and also tested a different ketone ester. The ketone ester worked, butane diol didn't. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that is. Uh, probably something to do with the, how the biology of, of the two enantiomers must be a little bit different when it comes to the brain. Um, and of course, I don't know exactly what the mechanism is um, that's working to suppress epilepsy, epilepsy-like spikes in Alzheimer's disease. Um, but the biology of ketone bodies is, is complicated, uh, complicated and fascinating. And to me, that, you know, that complication isn't a barrier, but it's actually the opportunity to get really specific, to really understand the, the nuts and bolts of exactly what is happening in Alzheimer's disease and heart failure and getting really specific with therapies. Um, of, of being able to figure out, you know, exactly what do we need to to provide to get the beneficial effect, um, you know, without getting other effects that we don't want, especially in older adults. Mm -hmm.